Hey there, Chef Dean Malfi here, and welcome to Plant Based Made Easy. Happy Tuesday. I know there's a little anxiety in the air right now here in the US because we have the election this evening. I know I'm feeling a little anxious, but you know what? We're gonna ground with a really delicious and easy lunch. I'm gonna show you how to make my wild rice and lentil bowls. This is a perfect grounding food for election day. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I wanna do is I'll do a split screen and you can follow along with me. I'm gonna actually start by um, working on our kale. Now, this is a wonderful recipe that actually contains cooked wild rice and cooked lentils with actually um, a marinated kale. It's actually raw kale that we're gonna massage with a little olive oil. So it might seem a little funny, but let's get right into it. We're gonna give this kale a massage. And as I'm massaging the kale, I'm gonna pretend like I'm giving myself a massage. All right, so <laughs> let's get into it. Uh, the first thing that we wanna do is get one bunch of green um, leaf kale. You can use lacinato kale, um, dino kale as it's also called, but the green leaf or the red leaf works better because you can see here's the green leaf. It actually has all of these wonderful kind of more um, softer, tender leaves. And and um, they actually will tenderize and massage up really well with the olive oil. The lacinato or the dino kale is actually um, more tough and it is a lot harder to massage with olive oil. It takes a lot longer. That requires a longer massage, but we don't have time for a long massage today, just a short, so short massage. Let's get going. So the first thing that I wanna do is prep my kale. I've already washed it and this comes from my CSA farm box. So it's super duper fresh, but I do wanna make sure that it is really nicely washed and, um, and and super clean because because it's organic it may contain some sand some dirt maybe even some bugs so wash those clean wash all the leaves open up the leaves get the water running through it and now all i want to do is remove the stem from the leaves i'm going to pull the stem right off and these i can save for my green smoothie which i'm absolutely going to save i don't like to throw away any part of the greens. I love to keep all parts, even like collard stems and Swiss chard stems, I save those as well. And I add them to saute pan with garlic and olive oil. Um, but for the red leaf and the green leaf and the dino kale stems, I always save them for my green smoothies. All right, so I'm just removing all of them. And look, I'll show you that these larger bottom stems are definitely some that you wanna remove. But as we get closer up, um, here, I'll show you here. This is like a thick stem. And as we get closer to the top here, that, that that's better, the top of the kale, it gets really kind of small and tender and thin. So we can keep the stem probably from here on up, but everything below that, we definitely want to remove. Oh, but that whole thing came off and that that's great. And the more stem you can remove, the better because it will actually have a better massage. It will tenderize with the olive oil. You're probably thinking, if you've never tenderized uh, the kale leaves with olive oil, you might be thinking, what? What the heck is she talking about? So let's let's show you right now. So this is washed and it's pretty much dry. I spun it in the salad spinner, but if it's not um, dry enough, you can also just go over it with a clean dish towel and make sure that you can kind of like pat all the rest of it dry. So I'm gonna get some gloves on for this. And if you have questions along the way about anything that I'm doing or plant-based eating or anything related to uh, plant-based living and eating, write it in the comment box, will you, please? Because I'd love to see who's here. Hi, mom. Hi, Diane. Oh, and we have someone uh, that joined us from Periscope, I think, or is this, yeah, I think, Cobill79577298. <laughs> yes, I do massage my food. Here's how we do it. So take your gloved hand, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of extra virgin olive oil here. And I'm gonna pour on a little extra virgin olive oil. And what I'm then gonna do is take my gloved hand and I'm literally going to massage the heck out of this kale. And by massaging the kale, what I really mean is I'm truly massaging the leaves with the oil. And by doing that, you're actually tenderizing the leaf. And it makes it really um, delicious and it makes it really kind of um, not so bitter. It actually gives it kind of like a softer, almost like a cooked vibe, even though there's no heat. Obviously, we're, we're only um, massaging it here. So we're not going to cook this on a saute pan with olive oil. We're literally just using um, the warmth of our palm and kind of like massaging the oil right in. And really, you want to take your time with this. 
like rub it in every leaf, the back side and the top side and get, get into the corners too. Get into those little kind of like curly ed edges and ed end pieces. You really want um, the curly parts to be nice and tenderized as well. You can do this with a little um, lemon juice. That also works. Although the lemon's gonna impart a lemony flavor. And are you seeing what's happening already? This kale is starting to sort of uh, weep and it's starting to like get a little bit like, you know, less fluffy and it's starting to like sort of like sink and relax into the bowl. It's re really relaxing into the oil. This looks fantastic. Yay, Karen says, Karen's champagne says, love kale. Can I use baby kale? Yeah, you can use baby kale. Here's the thing with baby kale. It's picked prematurely, so you really don't need to massage it for too long. Truly, baby kale, you really don't even need to massage. You can throw in a little olive oil and kind of just toss, toss, toss it, all right? But doing this whole bit where you're actually massaging it, um, the baby kale really won't need it. Baby kale is more like, like baby spinach, you know what I mean? So um, any oil or moisture, on those baby tender green leaves is just going to um, kind of make it shrivel rather quickly. So you don't really need to do it with baby kale, um, but although you could just toss it with a little olive oil, which would be nice. All right, this looks fantastic. I can see that every little piece has is nice and, and massaged. If I want, I can also just take the time and kind of like rip this into smaller pieces, kind of like go through your bowl here. And I'm doing this in a big work bowl, so it's really easy. But go through it, do a little pass over and make sure, is there any, are there any huge large pieces that I don't want to be too big in our bowls and our wild rice and lentil bowls? Make, make all your pieces kind of the same size, yeah? Perfect. Now take a look at this. I'm just gonna show you in the overhead. Look at how delicious this looks now. It's softer, it's more tenderized. Everything is glistening with oil. It looks really, really good. It's perfect. All right, I'm gonna remove my gloves, place those aside. And let's now get into making our dressing, yeah? All right, so I'm gonna place my salad dressing aside and let's make our sweet and spicy dressing. This is really great. This is emulsi an emulsified dressing, uh, meaning it is going to be kind of creamy and thick and delicious without any dairy. Obviously no cream, no dairy, it's all plant-based, always is and always will be. So let's make this emulsified dressing without any dairy using a really wonderful emulsification ingredient. And that ingredient, can anyone guess? I know that's what you were thinking. Dijon mustard, this stuff is it. Now, the reason this is really great for an emulsified dressing or a marinade is because it has an ingredient in it called soy lecithin. And that soy lecithin, it does one really good thing. It takes all the molecules of a dressing, the fat and the acid, and any of the molecules from the, the flavor agents like the salt and pepper will add to the dressing. We're even gonna add a little cinnamon and maple syrup. It takes all the uh, molecules and it actually fuses the molecules together so that they don't separate. And the soy lecithin is actually the main ingredient in mustard. So it's really great to use mustard, especially Dijon mustard, because Dijon mustard is gonna have a really nice um, flavor. It's great for salad dressing, as opposed to maybe the ballpark yellow mustard, which isn't as mm, refined for a salad dressing. Totally could work, but this is gonna give you even more um, delicious flavor. So we're gonna start with this. All right, so I'm gonna begin with just a little bit of Dijon, about two tablespoons or so. And I'm gonna do this inside of a mason jar so that we can do the old shake method. So one tablespoon and two tablespoons. That looks great. All right, the next thing we need is a little extra virgin olive oil. I'll show you that you can use EVOO extra virgin olive oil, which I have here, or you can use a little avocado oil, which I have here. Grapeseed oil will work fine. Um, but I really like the flavor of the olive, of the olive oil. It's kind of fruity. Um, it's got a really nice, delicious flavor. So I'm gonna use a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. And yes, I'm gonna measure this because I wanna make it perfect, all right? I wanna make it exactly emulsified, exactly right. Um, this dressing is really, really great when it has everything um, perfectly measured out. So I'll use a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, um, and then I'm gonna use some acid. 
And in my case today, I'm gonna use a little balsamic vinegar, but you can use any um, acid that you want. Lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, let's see, champagne vinegar, sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar, coconut uh, vinegar, anything that you want. But I like balsamic vinegar because it's, it's really festive. It's perfect this time of year. Um, it's got a really nice, delicious, full body flavor. So we're gonna use that and it goes well with the Dijon. You guys, I might have exactly a half a cup. I always do this and I'm like, surprise myself. Wow, I really have exactly half a cup. <laughs> Bingo. All right, that's perfect. Now let's see if I can get it all in this mason jar. This is gonna be quite the test. Okay, almost all of it. We did great. All right, the next thing that I want is a little balsamic. I'm gonna use one quarter of a cup of this. which I have right here. I'm gonna use aged balsamic. And that's the one that I use. This is Trader Joe's version. And because I said that I would do this right, why not get a quarter of a cup? This one comes out rather fast. And I love the color of the balsamic vinegar. It's really, really, really nice. One quarter of a cup goes right in. Great. Ooh, we're gonna just get to the the top here. Will we have enough room? Oh boy, yes we will. Okay, the next thing that I want is a little pure maple syrup. I broke my top yesterday and so I have to use a little cork, but here we're gonna use some um, pure maple syrup. I love maple syrup. One and a half tablespoons. That's one and a half, perfect. And that's gonna give it a nice, like really sweet, kind of dark amber flavor. It's gonna be great. Now, I also want some red chili flakes, a half a teaspoon, which is really important. I'm gonna grab my half teaspoon now. And I'm using pepperoncini or red, regular red pepper flakes here, super spicy and yummy. Half a teaspoon goes right in. I'm gonna use half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm gonna use organic cinnamon today because that's what they had at Trader Joe's and I absolutely love it. Um, and this is really super festive. Okay, all right, I can't take that off. I do this every time. There we go. For some reason, this top won't come off. So that's about a half a teaspoon. And then of course, S and P. I want a little bit of P, freshly ground black pepper. And always grind your own pepper. Do it, do it. It makes such a big difference. And some salt, half a teaspoon of sea salt that goes right in. And I can't forget that little bit of the oil and the little bit of the vinegar. Don't wanna waste any part of this. And then last but certainly not least, a little garlic. And this is gonna add nice savory quality. So I'm gonna add some garlic right now. I have a clove of garlic and I'm just gonna give it a nice whack with my knife. A big whack, the nana whack, as they say. And then remove the outer skin. And then I'm just gonna pop this right into a food process, I mean a food processor, a garlic press, not a food processor. Garlic press, yeah. Pop it right in and then press it. Oh, this, this dressing's gonna be so good. And it's really great for lots of different things. You can use this dressing on top of potatoes, on top of asparagus, artichokes, whatever. All right, so I think that's everything. EVOO, balsamic vinegar, Dijon mustard, maple syrup, garlic, cinnamon, red pepper flakes, salt and pepper, Yep, now give it a little shake. You can see everything is separate, yeah? You see the fat on top, that's the oil. You see the acid on the bottom, and then you see all the contents, the garlic and everything else right in the center. That means it's not quite emulsified, but to emulsify this, this is what we do. Give it a shake, like a really vigorous shake. Get into it. <laughs> Get your face muscles into it. This, this right here, this is grounding. It's shaking your salad dressing jar. I hope this election goes well. Okay. <laughs> now I have an emulsified dressing. This is beautiful. Look at the color. It is dark and delicious. Let me just taste it. Oops. I love using these um, uh, BPA-free silicone tops for my mason jars as opposed to the old metal ones that used to rest all the time. If you want to check out the the tops, these, these mason jar tops, I actually have them on my Amazon page. You can do that. Mm. Wow, is that good? Wow, the cinnamon and the pepper, the red pepper flakes, great combo. That's really yummy. It's really interesting. And, and the 
Dijon, it has a nice pop, like a zippiness. I love it, it's really great. All right, so this is gonna go aside. And now let's talk about the other ingredients. You definitely wanna cook up some wild rice. So I'm gonna use cultivated California grown wild rice right here. This is a product of the great state of California. I love wild rice. Um, it's actually not a rice, it's actually considered a seed. They call it a pseudo seed um, because it's one of these seeds that you can actually soak and then cook like a grain. Um, but it's it's not really grain, it's a seed. And um, I, here it is, here's what wild rice looks like if you aren't familiar with it. Oop, there we go. Do you see how black it is? They are really long seeds and they're gorgeous, they're really black. They open and split when you cook them up and here's what it looks like cooked. I'm just gonna show you, I cook up about um, just under four cups and the best way to, to cook up wild rice because it's a seed, it will take a really long time, is to take about one part wild rice to three parts water and to soak it overnight. Now I just use one of these um, quart containers and I put one cup of my wild rice with three cups of water, I put a top on, I soak it with some cold filtered water in the refrigerator overnight while I, right before I go to sleep. And in the morning, I cook it up by adding um, the wild rice with some new water in a pot, again it's one to three, with with a touch of salt, just like you would pasta water, and you cook it for about 20 to 30 minutes um, on a boil, covered, on a, on, a, on a slow boil, covered for about 20 to 30 minutes, and it is perfectly cooked and delicious. And the, one of the ways that you know that it's cooked and delicious is that it splits open. And I'm just gonna try it right now. It should be chewy and tender. It's, it's really great. Now the other ingredient we're gonna use are some lentils. Now I love the steamed lentils. These are pre-cooked already, and here's how they come in a box just like this, and I just open up the box, pull out the lentils, and they come in a, in a like a, what do you call this? Like an air-sealed pouch, cryovac? I think that's what it's called. Anyway, we're gonna open this up, and we're gonna put it into a bowl, and because it's been air sealed, they, it's kind of like a brick of lentils. Of course, you can cook your own lentils, you can use any lentils that you want, Green lentils, pui lentils, black lentils. Um, pui lentils are my favorite. They are wonderful, um, but harder to find. You can also use canned lentils, which would be absolutely delicious. I just cut away this this uh, wrapper and that's it. Now for this, I wanna actually use a fork and just kind of fluff up the lentils because they've been sitting in a pouch without air for probably a while. And so I just wanna kind of make sure that they're Loose again. There we go. Loosen them up. And these are great, you guys. You can. This is great for salad. You can make sloppy joes with it. Veggie burgers. I love um, buying the pouch of lentils just like this from Trader Joe's. I buy them once a week for sure. And they're just really great protein to have on hand. Cool. All right. So now I think we have everything. We've got the kale, it's been chopped and it's been tenderized and massaged most importantly. Um, we've got the, the wild rice, we've got the lentils. Now the last thing that I need are a couple other ingredients. These are kind of just garnishes, if you will. Um, number one, we're gonna use some pecans or pecans, depending on how you say it, where you're from, which I love, perfect this time of year, right? I'm also going to use some, oh, I'm gonna show you the package just in case. These are raw pecans. This is what they look like, right? Just in a little pouch. I love these. Um, I'm going to use some uh, pickled beets, which I have in a jar here. You can also pickle your own, which is very easy to do. Just find any quick pickle recipe and then put some, um, some raw beets in your quick pickle and let them sit there. Really good stuff. I love the quick pickle. Um, and I love the, the jar beets if I can't do it myself. And then the last ingredient, some scallions, something green, something delicious. This is gonna give it a really nice savory, kind of oniony, herbaceous flavor. And I think it's time that we plate up. So let's do it. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna put it in this bowl here. Um, I think I'm gonna start with some, some kale. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start with some kale because it's so fluffy. I kinda wanna tamper it down with some other ingredients kind of over the top. So kale goes down first, about a cup. Ooh, that looks good. Yeah, and I realized I didn't season my kale, so now's a good time to do that. You can do a little salt and a little pepper. You can also massage your kale with a little salt. 
I find the olive oil is just fine. Plus I was trying to accommodate for all of my friends here that are whole food plant-based. So you can do whatever calls you. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of the, the wild rice here. I think I need a bigger spoon, my golly. Yep, I do. And I'm just going to plate on top of the kale. So we're thinking about a bowl here. We just want to fill it up. I want like about a cup. Perfect. All right, other side, I'm going lentils. Yeah, we're gonna go this side. Perfect. A cup to a half a cup, whatever you think. And you know, I think because I love the pickled um, beets, I think I might just leave them whole. Let's see. Sometimes they're really, they're too big. So let me just grab a few. And beets do stain, so I love to just put beet, the pickled beets right on a, oh, these are perfect. These are already kind of diced up right on a little plate if I need to kind of just dab them. Look at how gorgeous these are, right? Super pink, purple, yummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, don't mind me. All right, I'm just gonna grab like three or four. How about five? There we go. Perfect. Now we need some pecans. So let me just chop these up. I'm gonna use my chef's knife here just to make it easier for myself. You can use any nut you want. You can truly use pumpkin seeds, macadamia nuts. These are perfect. Yesterday we used hazelnuts in our cornmeal pancakes. Did you guys try that recipe yet? Seriously, that was really, really good. I was like, I was very, very pleasantly surprised. All right, so I'm gonna add some pecans. The recipe says that you can toss the kale with the pecans and the beets, um, but I just wanted to kind of do it in front of you so that you could see. All right, this is going right back here to my little bowl. Save that for later. And then we need something green and then we need to dress it. So I'm gonna use scallions here. I have five scallions. I like to keep my scallions in water. I, I keep my scallions just like I would fresh cut flowers and just like I would any soft herbs like basil, um, parsley, cilantro, all of these, they, they sit really well in water. But scallions in particular, you can actually regrow. So if you keep them in water on your window seal, um, they need a little water and a little light and they will regrow on the, the tops will regrow. So just kind of keep that in mind if you want. You can regrow them, I think, two to three times depending on the, the root ball. That's the root ball there. And I'm just going to use the green and the white part. Thin little slices, right? In culinary school, we only could use usually white or green because I went to a French culinary institute. So we learned classic French cooking and flat, classic French technique. And so it was like very refined. So you could never really blend, you know, green and <laughs> and white parts of, uh, of scallions. But now that I am, uh, it's my kitchen. I'm gonna use both parts and just kind of like sprinkle the top. This is gonna be gorgeous. It's gonna taste so good. I love the freshness of um, of the scallion. It's, it's really, really nice. All right, I'm gonna pull this aside. Cool. Last but not least, we just need to dress the, the actual salad or the, 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 I should call it, it's not really a salad, the veggie and lentil, sorry, wild rice and lentil bowl. Need another taster spoon for this. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to drizzle it on because it's going to be really thick. I really just want to kind of make sure that um, I get a couple sp good spoonfuls. That's all I really need. Oh man, yum. Yeah, let's do a question. All right, the great Roberta Baumgartner. My mom asks, I'm reducing fats. Any suggestion on how to decrease oil and not affect taste for this dressing? Great question, thank you for asking mom. My mom, you guys, is reading The Starch Solution. It's a really cool book. I'd been heard, I'd heard a lot about it. I'd, I've, I, I had heard a lot about it before my mom told me about it and now I'm really interested in reading it. Anyway, it's really a whole food plant-based diet that is, um, uh, low fat, whole food plant based, and it emphasizes the use of eliminating oils or reducing your oil intake. So mom, here's a great way to do this. And for anyone that's interested, if you want to make a salad dressing without oil, 
um, know that it's going to be a little different, right? One of the best ways to actually enjoy salad dressing without oil is to re replace the oil with some sort of um, juice. So I've done a lot of whole food, plant-based, oil-free dressings with orange juice, lemon juice, um, even like uh, even sometimes like li lime juice and lemon juice in, in moderation. So you can re replace um, the oil with juice. It won't be one-to-one, -one, obviously. And sometimes I each also have made dressings with cold filtered water with a little lemon juice or um, orange juice added because that's going to give you a little sweetness. And then you can add all the other ingredients. So that would be my sort of easiest general way to approach that. Um, but, but give it a try. I have some really great um, oil-free uh, dressings um, that I, I really like, like I said, that, that use just kind of any recipe and then just swap out the oil for a little combination of, of, of cold water, filtered, cold filtered water, I think really works um, because it's kind of tight like oil is. And then um, orange juice is the best. And then I would say like lime juice and lemon juice would be the next best. So that's my my recommendation and you can still use the cinnamon you can still use the dijon the red pepper flakes all of that is still going to be really great for this all right this looks really yummy oh yeah let's do another question all right penny asks is there a significant health benefit difference between sea salt and himalayan salt no no there is not penny it's a great question the really big difference is that sea salt is kind of general all-purpose we sometimes don't even know where it comes from it's just kind of labeled as sea salt so more often than not it probably comes from the mediterranean um or that's what at least they say let's see if the, my, my salt has uh, has a location I'm, I'm i'm doing this for you penny let's see Oh, this is interesting. I had no idea. This is product of the Bahamas. So this mu must come from um, those waters. But yeah, no, the only difference is that the Himalayan sea salt comes from uh, the Himalaya region. And so that's really the big difference. Sea salt can be cultivated from many different regions too, and then bottled or um, packaged into one container. Um, so salt from a lot of different places in one container can still be considered sea salt, whereas Himalayan sea salt really just comes from one region. It's kind of like champagne, um, you know, from the champagne region can only be called champagne, very similar to that. Um, so I love that you're experimenting with salts though. I love the Himalayan sea salt. It's really, really yummy. It's good stuff. And you, you, by the way, you can use it just like sea salt. So that is definitely one to one. So if you want to replace a recipe with sea salt, um, from sea salt to Himalayan, you can just replace it um, one to one very easily. Thank you for asking. All right. So look at this, you guys, wild rice and lentil bowls. This looks so yummy. I'm just going to give you a second to soak this in with me. Yeah. Pickled beets, some green scallions, some pecans, some um, really nice massaged kale here. That that kale has is, is never been happier. You guys, this looks fantastic. I have to give it a little bite. And I want I want to bite with every bit of it in it. But before I do, I just want to stop for a moment and give this day and this food a little gratitude. Thank you, food. Thank you, God. All right. Here we go. I'm going to get a little lentil, a little green scallion, some wild rice, maybe some kale. Can I do it all in one bite? Yeah, there's the bite right there. Cheers. Wow. Mm. Money. That is so good. People would pay a lot of money for something this delicious out in the world but you're going to make it right in your kitchen. I like this. This is yummy. This is already making me feel grounded and I haven't even eaten all of it yet. Mm. I hope that you guys make this recipe. And if you make it and you adapt it in any way, let's say you swap in dried cranberries instead of scallions, or you do a little basil as well as scallions or whatever, however you want to make it your own, take a photo, will you? And pop it into our Facebook group, Plant Based Made Easy. We are 2,300 people and growing every single day. It's a really cool community of people from all over the world. I really mean it. Not just from different parts of the United States, but like uh, we have people from Abu Dhabi, from Turkey, from India, from Thailand, all over you guys. So please join our community. It is free to enter. I really hope that you can be a part of that community online. It's a wonderful group. And if you haven't done so already, please download my cookbook, plant-based made it easy for November. That is where this recipe comes from. Um, I hope that you enjoy it. And no matter what happens tonight for the election, 
I'm just really praying for peace. I really hope that our country and our world will come together. And I really trust that um, everything is exactly the way that it should be. As hard as that is to take, I really believe that, that is true. Yeah? All right, you guys. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day. Please come back tomorrow. I'm going to be making a lovely dinner recipe, portobello tacos with delicious chimichurri. We're going to break away from the seasonal flavors and just have a, a little bit of a difference on our palate with these portobello tacos that are screaming. So I will see you for that. Have a wonderful evening. Ciao for now. Peace.